Jesus. We greet those who are watching via Facebook Live on today. We ask that you like, tag, share. Let them know that service is going on here at the Grove. Amen. Amen. We will now have an opening selection by our choir. Thereafter, I will come back with the worship declaration. We will recite the 100 songs in its entirety. Amen. Amen. And we're so glad to have Bishop Farrell with us on today. Amen. We're so good to see him. Amen. Come on, choir.
Lord God, we lift up our lady cop, oh God, that she will continue to undergird her husband in prayer, oh God. Lord God, we lift up the children, oh God, that they will be what you call them to be, oh God. Lord God, we lift up, oh God, the deacons on today. We lift up the mothers, oh God. Lord God, we lift up Oak Grove as a whole, oh God. The deacons, the trustees, the choir, oh God. The musicians, oh God. We lift up Bishop Farrah and his family, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I lift up the leadership of Oak Grove team, oh God. Oh God, the absent body, oh God. We lift up, oh God, the ones who are watching via Facebook Live on today, oh God. Lord God, touch the ones who are on their way, oh God, and those who desired but couldn't be here, oh God. Lord God, I ask, oh God, that you touch the churches in the surrounding areas, oh God. Lord God, that we will all be on one accord, oh God. Lord God, because it's all about you. It's all about the kingdom, oh God. It's all about, oh God, being disciples for Christ, oh God. Lord God, for we know that your coming is and that you're coming very soon, oh God. So, Lord God, let us have our spiritual houses in order, oh God. Lord God, we lift up every family, oh God, that's represented on here today, oh God. Lord God, I lift up, oh God, the sick and the shutting, oh God. I lift up Sister Beverly to you, oh God. Lord God, I ask you to go to Leland, oh God, and touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask, oh God, that you go to New Jersey, oh God, and touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop through Virginia, Pennsylvania, oh God, California, oh God. Lord God, I lift up this nation to you, oh God. Lord, because I heard in my spirit, oh God, that Zion is calling. How will you answer, oh God? Lord God, you're looking for us to all come back to prayer, oh God, to come back to you, oh God. So God, we lift up this nation to you, oh God. Lord God, this service is in your hand. Do what you will do, oh God. Save on today. Someone needs a breakthrough, oh God. Whether it be in the home or the finances, oh God. Someone is standing in the gap for loved ones, oh God, to be saved. Save, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask that you send the willing workers into this vineyard, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, there's much work to be done, oh God. So let us be busy, oh God, about your work in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I'm just grateful and I'm thankful on today. Lord God, Oak Grove stands in the gap for those who need prayer. We all need prayer, God. We all need you on today, oh God. Lord God, I ask that you bless the word that will come forth, oh God. Let it come forth with joyless power, oh God. Let the word change, heal, set free, and deliver, oh God. Let us go out different from when we came in, oh God. Oh God, increase our hearts to love, oh God. Increase our hearts to believe, oh God. Increase our faith on today, oh God. Oh God, and we're going to give you the praise. We're going to give you the honor. And we're going to give you the glory. Lord God, we lift up those in the military, oh God. We lift up those, oh God, who are serving on the front lines, oh God. Lord God, touch the doctors, oh God. Lord God, I ask, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will touch all those who are in law enforcement, oh God. Lord God, I ask, oh God, that you mm, touch the hearts and the minds of the people, oh God, that are to protect and serve, oh God. That they do it to your glory, oh God, and not to man, oh God. Have your way, like only you can. For this is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And we say, Amen, 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 Amen. amen. amen.
Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Robots. These are your weekly observations. Pastor Kyle would like to express his gratitude for all the robots that accompanied him last Sunday in Auburn, Vermont. The Lord truly met us in that service. The monthly grocery giveaway will be this Saturday, February 18th, from 12 to 1 p.m. All volunteers are asked to arrive between 11.15 and 11.30 a.m. Also on next Sunday at 2 p.m., there will be a leadership team meeting. All auxiliary chairpersons and church leadership, please make preparations to be in attendance. Black Heritage Month the entire schedule at the group. Today is Black College Sunday. Next Sunday, February 19th, is Black Pride Sunday. Come dressed in your favorite African Pride attire. On the fourth Sunday is Sunday's Fest, which is February 26th. Dress up in your Sunday's Fest. Ladies, find a hat to complete your outfit. Men, put on a suit, bow tie, or necktie. Let's come dress as the Lord has blessed us with his good self. Join Dr. Cobb via Facebook Live this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Wednesday Now. We will embark upon part two of the series entitled, Excuse to Excellence. For lunch and children's church at the Grove, this allows our children to be in a safe and secure environment while being taught the word of God by safe teachers. If you are interested in assisting, please see Pastor Cobb. Teachers will have to go through thorough training before being released to interact with our youth in this setting. Also, you do not have to be a licensed teacher to participate. The first quarter church business meeting will be on Friday, March 3rd, at 6.30 p.m. All robots, please make plans to be in attendance. Today's Life History Moment is brought to you by Ms. Inaya Fairton. Henry Boyd was a man who was born into slavery in 1802 until he was 18 years old and he was apprenticed out to a cabinet maker in, in Kentucky. But not only that, he was so talented, he helped him, it helped him buy his own freedom. But by the age of 24, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, which was a free state. But it boarded with Kentucky well, he wasn't really looking towards African Americans which made it very hard for them to get hired or to get around. Sooner or later, Boyd got hired as a janitor at a store and a lightning came in drawn causing commotions and whatnot. So Boyd wanted to protect the employers for the next time anything else would happen like this incident to make them feel more safer. So Boyd invented countertops to make the space between the employers and the customers. Once Boyd earned enough money, he bought his sisters and brothers through them, and also to buy his own workshops, which were in four different locations making better friends. But at one of those locations, he built another invention, which were better railings, to make the better friends more sturdy. Boy decided to make his own better friend design with the railings to make the measures more fitted. Boy was so good at this that his white competitors were so amazed and jealous of his work that they started to copy him. And of course, back then, white people thought that they were better than African Americans. So Boy had a white employer for his business, and the employer got him a patent for Boy. So his white competitors got mad that Boy had better bedding furniture than the industry. So they began burning his workshops. And that made Boyd high risk for insurance companies. And that led to Boyd retiring. But that didn't stop him from helping and giving for other people. So Boyd became a conductor for the Underground Railroad and built a room that could fit five slaves, runaway slaves. Side note, in 1832, Boyd paid to post in the paper that he knew that the Florida outbreak was waterborne. Waterborne, but they did not want to believe him because he is black, so lots of people had died. Thought of the week. Dreams are lovely, but they are just dreams. Fleeting, ephemeral, pretty. But dreams do not come true just because you dream them. It's hard work that makes things happen. It's hard work that creates change. Shonda Rhimes, American television producer. He's like, we've got to mention. All right, let's give our media department here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that Sister Naya uh, did give the Black History Moment and Mr. Bill. She did the history and she called up and she did the history. 
every single person. This ain't what the churches know. This is what has come now. We know that inflation is high. So uh <laughs> the used to be ain't what it is, amen. But uh amen. Uh, we just want to want you to use this to encourage you to keep on doing what you know, amen. God bless you. Same thing in case the Lord is what it was going to do. Right? <laughs> Amen. But I say that to say we can't talk about what our youth is not doing if we're not giving them the opportunity inside the church. Amen. We're not, amen. Yes. Yes. We're not attempting to bribe them, but I believe we ought to commend them. Amen. At least I know growing up, that's what we did. Uh, and students were on EB Hobro. Amen. The church would uh, lock certain funds to be able to give to those that. Or on any our own, and you know it made people want to do better with their grades. And so that being, uh, you know, well, that what do we have to do, Amen? Because when we were when we were kids, we had adults, Amen. We needed someone to keep us on the straight and narrow. So let us do what we can to encourage our youth uh, to let them know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, Amen. Amen. We thank God. We look forward to, Amen. The other moments that we'll have for the next two Sundays. We thank God for Black College Sunday and some of you that have one. Well, yeah. Amen. I know I saw some Eagles. Amen. I've been to Sims and uh, I saw AMT. Yes, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. We thank God. And I know for some of that, some said, well, you got on uh, and I uh, certainly we got away from it. And I thought where I could find it, I could find it where I uh, thought we'd get it, but nonetheless, I didn't have what I thought what I wanted to have. Nonetheless, uh, thank God for you that did participate, so I don't want you to think that uh, we just do something out there, but uh, we uh, tried our best, uh, but we're not able to be successful, but Lord will, for the rest of the month, we'll be cooperating with our attire, uh, uh, but some, nonetheless, this day, again, if you cannot, if you don't have what we uh, have put out for you for our attire for the ring of the month, don't feel discouraged, uh, it's not, it's just an opportunity for us to embrace, amen, the skin that we're in, and yeah. we, uh, we that are that our people of color, we come from good stuff. Amen. So that being said, we want to give homage. And let me say this to all of us. Uh, Black History Month, amen. And please tell your children, your grandchildren, whoever else may concern. It's not just for the month of February. But we're going to be talking about Black History all year long. Talk about the achievements that we're making. Amen. Amen. All of us that's in here today are uh, with Black History because we're alive. We're yeah. Black History because God has kept you. And God has lost you. Amen. And so we ought to be grateful and thankful to Him. For what he has done for us, amen. And we do thank God, amen, for uh, Bishop Farrell being with us on today, amen. And this is our beautiful department, amen. God bless you. We were, uh, we saw him on last night at the um, uh, celebration of Dr. Tyler, amen. We celebrated his 51, uh, 51st, excuse me, anniversary of pastor in the White Oak Missionary Baptist Church. And so we had a, a wonderful time and enjoyed uh, them on last night as we were there. And also, we do thank God for our Vangel Seals being back in our service, amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. I didn't read the most reluctant on saying this last week, so part of my head, not to my heart. Uh, we're so glad I know that we had something that was under the weather. Amen. Our trustee Harris is amen. Back he was back with us on last week. Amen. My sister uh, Joelle, I love the love and is back with us on today. Amen. It's so good to see all of you that may have been out that I did not know anything of. It's always good to have Reverend Barnum with us. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Barnum. She served a long time here at Oak Grove with uh, yeah. Amen Pastor David. Amen. So we thank God for her. We are always, I know she knows this, but she is always welcome here at Grove. Amen. So we yeah. thank God for her, and we will never forget, Amen, what she has done to advance this church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we're not losing it. We got this just overnight. Amen. And we thank God for those that have poured into this ministry down through the years, and certainly to our choir, saying to the glory of God. I just want to give a few reminders that they got away that we may worship the Lord through by giving. I want to say that um, um, uh, we normally don't meet uh, half the church, but on today, if I had uh, Deacon Upman and Deacon Quinn and uh, Sister Joel, if we could uh, huddle together, I already touched base with Trustee Bible, so we're not leaving anyone out. Uh, but if we could, um, if I could have your attention for about five to ten minutes after service, that would be great. I won't hold you along with that, I promise, because just like y'all are hungry, I probably will be too. <laughs> so if we could just huddle together a few minutes after service, um, I would greatly appreciate that. Also, 
Thou will help remind us. Um, our grocery giveaway is this Saturday, so this is the third Saturday of the month, uh, from 12 to 1. And so we do have the leadership meeting at 2 o'clock, and the hope was because we have a leadership meeting on the same day, that song will just spend the majority of that day with us. And so uh, if we uh, lead our leaders and are able uh, to do so, we ask that you uh, would come and be uh, in, in your places uh, between 11, 15, 11, 30, I think I have that right, uh, as far as so that when, we, when the groceries are delivered, we can, uh, we can have, we can uh, certainly go through those items and, and, and uh, get them to where we, where they will need to go unless we have something that uh, will stop by and pick those up. So uh, if you are a leader, this would be a good Saturday for you to get a Saturday in, first quarter, uh, and just, just come in 11, 15 uh, and uh, be with us and then uh, help we uh, deliver the groceries and do what we need to do with them to help we should be at 2 o'clock and certainly you want to be a part of that so um, please now please sir, keep that in your uh, mind also our uh, first quarter church business meeting will be coming up the first Saturday excuse me first Friday in March at 6 30 so we ask that you will be a part of that and so we have some things that are coming up as far as what our church is doing with the um, children's church and so we, again we are uh, launching our uh, children's church ministry kingdom kids and so if you desire to be a part of that amen if you feel uh, first pray about it amen because you're not just going to probably have to deal with your kids with somebody else's kids amen because you know you can't do other people's kids like you do your own amen Amen. We just keep it honest. Amen. You may cluck and slap your children, amen, but when it comes to other folks' children, amen, sometimes mom may not be so kind for that, amen. Now, we do believe that our children should be in a structured environment, but you do know, now, I know what I'm talking about, you can't treat other folks quite like you do yours, because yours, you can look at them a certain way and they'll get in order. And when other folks' kids can look back at you with you can at them, and so you need to be, <laughs> I, 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 I pray we don't have that here, but uh, with that being said, uh, please give that your attention. Now, what we don't want to do is uh, launch this ministry, uh, prepare to launch it, and we don't have any volunteers. Now, we have children on today, amen, and so with that being stated, we need, we have, we need to have children's church, amen. We need to have an environment for our children. Somebody should be clapping when we say that. We need to have somewhere for our children to be. I don't care if we only have two, amen. Let the two go somewhere where they can get the word of God so we can plant that seed, because if we don't plant the seed, church, we're going to be guilty. We're going to be guilty for not planting this season. So, not just my children, but he's doing it because he got two small children. Yeah. Uh, but it's not just because of my two children, but I want you and your children to tell your children and your grandchildren and their friends at school. But imagine if all of your children would just invite three of their friends to church. And our daughter's class, and they got a large classroom, they've got 40, 40 students in one classroom. <laughs> Four students in one classroom. This is kind of how they're structured there. And uh, they got four or five, how many teachers? Four teachers. And uh, just imagine if, 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 if four of her friends would come with her to church. Uh, and that's something to think about. We're exposed to a lot that sometimes we don't take advantage of. Uh, we, we own our jobs, amen. And, and so we have to be careful of that because sometimes when you talk about what church you go to, you know, if you want a job cut enough, they don't want to know who your pastor is. <laughs> but certainly, uh, these are good times for us to market. We'll talk about that during the church business meeting to market our church. We want people to know what we stand for and to come and get an experience and grow with us here at Grove. So tell your children, amen, as they go, those that are old enough, uh, let them know. You know, when the kids come home for sleepover, let them know uh, what church you go to. Pack it on the other let them go back on Saturday night. Keep them one more day. They ain't going to kick you. Bring them to church. Amen. We want the church to continue to grow and to thrive. And if we don't, amen, our church, if a, a church that does not have you is what? It's a dying church. And I know we don't like to hear about that, but with all that being said, within the next 40, 50 years, including myself, some of us may not be here. And so what we got to think about is the church after we leave. And I don't want it to stop with my age. Uh, and so we want this thing to continue to roll on. So we would, uh, let's get that out and get that in the airway so that we will uh, build up uh, what the Lord has blessed us here on today. So uh, please uh, uh, pay attention to your weekly reminders. If you're not on the list, if you're not on the e-blast, please let us know so that we can put you on that, that you can uh, be privileged to the information that's going out. Thank you so much to everyone that went with us last Sunday. Did not the Lord bless us now in Godwin? Amen. The Lord bless us real good. Amen. Now, if you missed it, you just 
mess up real good. The Lord blessed us in a marvelous way. The service was just beautiful last Sunday. So thank you for all those. We got out at about 2 o'clock. <laughs> and so, hey amen. I know we had to kind of get uh, hit the ground running, and most of you got there before I did. So thank you, Lord. I don't say that lightly, and I will say this as we prepare to turn back over to our family sales for the, uh, the, the worship of the Lord as we worship Him through our giving. We do have some upcoming engagements, so what we try our best to do is to get that out to you um, as best as we possibly can. So what we plan to do is to make sure that we can just lump things together in a month. So what we know what, what we have going on in April, May, June, July. So we know we have some things that are coming up. We're not going to try to over uh, bombard us. And we don't expect you to go every time I go somewhere. But if you can't go, the least you can do is pray. Amen? Amen. And so pray for me that the Lord give us strength to do what we do because we mean business when it comes to God. And we want to hear him say, well done. But you can't say well done unless we do well. And so we want to do the best we can while we can. As the Lord has given us strength. All right, so please, ma'am, please, sir, come yourselves according, uh, accordingly to those. Remind us, God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. Now let's put our hands together as we prepare to worship the Lord through our giving. Amen. Elder Jamar Cobb. 
I ask that you lift him in prayer as he stands behind the sacred desk to say what thus saith the Lord. We pray for him that God will strengthen him and keep him. So after the choir sings, one selection, the next voice you shall hear is that of our pastor, Elder Jamar Cobb. Sing choir, preach pastor.
feel the spirit of God sometimes through uh, uh, the, the TV and through uh, what is, uh, the phone or whatever I'm watching, but it's not like being in his presence. Amen. And so uh, as we continue just to lead God better, I, I submit to you, let's position ourselves for better. And if you can't be talking about better, you won't get up off the couch. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. You better get up off that thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I was set with something in the day. I said, get up off that thing. You feel better. Yeah. So y'all don't feel like that. You better dance until you feel better. Yeah. Or somebody, you just got to get up and give God the do So we gotta give God what's due him. All right, I'm glad that we are here. Thank God for my wife on today. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. For all of you, you know it. That's how this protocol that we did mention her earlier. Amen. Thank God for us on the door. And so at least we're gonna go ahead and release you from your duty. I know that we to read the scripture first, but we want to go ahead and release you from the duty. This is something, um, and I know this is Black Heritage Month, Black History Month, and I um, somewhat was. Lord, are you sure? And uh, I knew he was sure, and I was not completely uh, in tune uh, last Sunday when I gave the subject, and then the Lord uh, derailed that, um, which he, he's God, he can do what he wants to do, and we uh, just talked to you about deception, and didn't even know uh, that Sunday afternoon. Now, I don't watch, I didn't watch the Grammys, but from when I heard what they had on there, they had some, some deceptiveness. And, uh, and certainly, as I was meditating on this week, uh, trying to find a word that's going to make, you know, I try, I, I try to find stuff that's going to make you shout. I, I want you to shout. Uh, but then sometimes the Lord say, don't make them shout. You need to teach. Uh, because the teaching sometimes is what, uh, is really what transforms the lives. And this is why we cannot afford, we're coming from 2 Timothy on day, uh, chapter 3, uh, but this is why we cannot afford, if you're not plugged into our Wednesday now, our series now where we're talking about moving from excuse to excellence, you need to get on there. Uh, you need to get on there because I'm telling you, look, now the Lord has now opened some stuff. That's up for you to receive and be in the right place. And so um, uh, as, as we continue to go through the next few weeks, um, uh, we invite you to be with us on, on Wednesday. Now we're trying to not hold you no more than 45 minutes. Sometimes we go a little bit over that. But, you know, good news, y'all ain't got to get in your car and go back home. <laughs> All you got to do is walk off. Amen. Sometimes we won't even do that. And so with that being said, I challenge you, amen, uh, you know, if you won't be, uh, make an impact in someone's life, you want to be a strong Christian. And a strong Christian cannot survive without the word of God. And so I invite you, if you're not joining us on Wednesday now, please, not because I'm teaching, but because I, I just hear what the Lord is having for us. And so uh, we're going to give you what the Lord has and, um, and, and, and let you go home and watch the Super Bowl and come back and see you home. I don't know who you root for, who you want to ask for no poll because we don't want to chip the church up. Amen. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, um, uh, we do thank God for all things. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to just sit this morning, sit uh, for this, if you will. Uh, you can sit. Uh, now, I'm going to, if Amanda says you have your mic, okay? Uh, and then what we're going to ask you to do is, uh, we, we, we may, we'll see how the Lord takes us. Um, but I know you keep your Bible, but this is going to make sure you keep your Bible so you follow along with us. We may need you to uh, read some scriptures now. Uh, y'all don't mind if I talk to y'all today, amen? Amen. amen. Y'all got your Bibles? Yes. Amen. You got your Bibles? Hold it up, hold it up. You got your Bibles? Hold it up. You got it on the phone? Hold it up. Amen. Because everything is falling down and going down, but what? The Word of God. Amen. So I invite you, whether you got it on your technical device or whatever, and if you got somebody that's inside and ain't got no Bible, share with them. Let them see what the Lord has to say. All right, y'all, let's take it to me. All right, let's take it to me, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. From the Amplified Version says this, But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times, the scripture says, perilous times, times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult things that will be hard to bear. Verse 2, for people will be lovers of self. Narcissistic and self focused. Lovers of money, impaled by greed, boastful, arrogant, rivals, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Verse 3 And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, clouds in human, inhumane, irreconcilable. I don't care how much you try to get along with them, uh, 
just can't see no, you just can't seem to get things straightened out with some folks because they don't want to reconcile. Malicious gossips, devoid of self-control, meaning that they're intemperate and immoral. Brutal, haters of good, verse 4, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5, holding to a form of outward godliness. In other words, they know how to shout, but they ain't got no power. No religion, no church. And you can be in church, you know, you can be in church all your life and you still don't have no power. Just because you come to church, don't make you a Christian. They just make you a church attendant. Uh, but he says, Godless, godlessness, in other words, uh, uh, you, you have religion, but you're not, you don't have power. Although they have denied his power for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. In other words, they, they claim they know who Jesus is, but when the road meets the road, they ain't got no power. Scripture says, avoid such people and keep far away from them. For among them are those who mourn. Words you get their way into, listen, worm their way into homes and captivate morally weak and spiritually dark women. Way down. Do you hear that? You got hear what I said? Women. Vulnerable. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. All right, y'all hear me? I'm not reading to that. I'm not reading to what I'm saying. The burden of their sin, if displayed by various impulses, in verse 7, always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them. Let so, me tell you something, church. There are some restaurants, some tables I can't sit down at. Because I can't eat what you serve. Because if you got nasty fingernails, I can't eat your cook. Y'all hear what I'm saying on that? If you if you in the two places from the country, they say if, 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 if they don't keep a clean a clean bathroom and a clean kitchen, don't eat that cooking. So you can't eat from everybody. Just like in the natural, so it is spiritual. There are some people that are on these outlets. You can't listen. You can't listen to what they're saying because if you do, you gonna be gonna be drifting away. Always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able. To come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm going to talk to us for the next few moments about this, this subject, nothing deep. Perilous times. Perilous times. Perilous times. The King James Version says, Perilous times will come. Perilous times. Mr. Jim say, neighbor. Oh, that neighbor didn't want to talk to me. I say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I got news for you. You, you, you and, me and me are living in perilous times. Yeah. I'm going to say you and I, but I'm going to make it right. You and me are living in perilous times. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I know many of you have heard this for so long that maybe, just maybe, some may be just tired of hearing this, but let me remind you that Jesus is coming soon. Yes, yes. I know that many of you, like myself, have heard this all your lives. Some have heard this, Bishop, and, 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 and like many of us, uh, we, 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 we believe that, but some of us have heard that all of our lives, and, 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 and to this sad reality, some now have, regarding the unmitigated audacity, to say that if Jesus is truly coming back, if it's really real that he's returning, if it's true that he's going to rapture his people, why hasn't anything happened yet? What is taking him so long? Perhaps he forgot what he said and he's no longer going to come back. But brothers and sisters, let me remind you of the words of the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us work, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is not the will of God that any of us be lost, that any of us face eternal damnation. And so as a result, he has extended to us a measure of mercy. Mercy. 
being defined as the compassion or forgiveness uh, shown towards someone who uh, it is within one's power to punish or harm. You can't show someone mercy unless you have the power to override what they're doing. And so God has extended to us a, a measure of mercy. Mercy has been described, as one would say, as God's patience in action. So, so God has extended to us grace which gives, which gives us the time to get right with him, to repent. He's extended to us mercy to get time to get right with him and repent from our sinful forgiveness and make him Lord of our lives. And while this is true that God is full of mercy, he's full of compassion, he's full of pity. That songwriter says, I love the Lord, he heard my cry and pity my every wrong. Let us not be reluctant to forget that one day, even though our God has a, a I mean, his, 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 his mercy, no man can count. We don't know how much mercy he's full of. He just gives it to us every day. And even though we should be receptive to that, let us not forget that one day mercy is going on now. I know we don't really talk about this like this anymore. But let me tell you something. There's going to come a time where there's going to be some people that are, that are going to look for mercy and say, Lord, have mercy. And guess what? Mercy ain't going to be over here tonight. So what does this have to do with the text, brother? Carl? What does this have to do with perilous times? I'm glad you asked. Because what I have come to discover is that perilous times is the rolling out of the red carpet for the last day. We all hear what I'm saying today. I said, perilous times is the rolling out of the red carpet for the last day. Yes, perilous times, if you will, if you is the light camera in action for the final scene. Because after all of the characters have gathered themselves, and after they found them places on their places on stage, and, and, and we say light camera action, and once this, once you hear this. This time when we hear that word action, it's going to be all the more. The characters are not going to reassemble themselves. Because this time when the curtain drops, it's going to be dropped forever. Oh. Now listen to me, though, today. Uh, last time we talked about this thing called deception. And we, now I know I did not give us much group time. I never want to talk about here in the world that we just talk about the tangent. So I'm going to give you. Back, back up what we were talking about last year because, and, and let me tell you something. If, if you're not bringing, I will say this, if you're not bringing, uh, raise your hand if you got a notepad, you got a notepad, come here. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. yeah, if you don't have one, I would suggest if you have some of us keep it in your phone, then that's fine. But I'm telling you, saints, get this and put this in your phone, put this in your devices. Why? Because if we can put in songs and, and put in our plans and doctor's appointments, then we ought to be putting in the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not, it's not because Pastor Cobb is preaching it. It's because you need to be able to fuel your inner man with the word of God. And so if you don't have a notepad, if you, if you don't have it, don't feel ashamed today. Just do better next week. But I'm telling you that you're going to need this word sooner than you think. And so last week we talked about this. Listen, we had no clue. You know, I got no affiliation with the Grammys. I have no clue. I didn't want to watch it now. And those that do watch it, that's not a scene. Grammys. I'm not saying that you're going to hell because you watched this. I didn't have the time to watch it last week. I didn't even know the Grammys were going to happen last week. But to my dismay, looked at it, and, and as I was talking last week about Satan being the great deceiver, you must understand that Satan's ultimate desire is for each and every one of you that's saved. Now, if you're not saved, he already got you. But if you're saved, it is his desire for you that profess salvation to end up lost. The devil is a deceiver. Notice if you real Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 from the American Standard Version, it says, And the great dragon was cast down. The old serpent. Who are we introduced to in Genesis? Satan is a serpent. But in the text here in Revelation, which is the final book, it says that he is now a great dragon. He was 
he was cast down, or he was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. We know that Satan was once, Satan was Lucifer. He was a beautiful angel. He was an archangel. And his name, if you go back and really look at it in his in origin, his name was Halal Lucifer. Um, yeah. And so he had Halal Lucifer, who was cunning, beautiful, all the quiet. And he got haughty. God said, Oh no. Two kings can't sit up here. You better get out of here. The Bible says that I saw Satan fall. And took a third of the host with him. And then those angels, which are called fallen angels, are now demonic forces. Now let me get something, let me get something back to you. Let me lean in just a little bit. Lean in for the Because his name was Halal. And this is why you ought to, if there's one word that you always ought to say, other than Jesus, is Hallelujah. Because when you say hallelujah, that lets, that reminds the devil. That's why it's called the highest praise. Because that reminds the devil that the job he once had, he no longer has. And so when we say hallelujah, we're not giving praise to hallelujah, but we're giving our hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, Lucifer was his name and he came out of heaven. God said, there's no other God but me. That's the bird of the heavenly host. And they are now fallen angels, which we know to be demons. And now, hallelujah, he has given us a name. And we understand what hallelujah really means. It reminds Satan that he once had a job, but he got fired. Sometimes you gotta press your way. You gotta press your 
way through that situation. And I'm not saying those of us that have ailments have been out because you got to use your common sense, you got to use good judgment. What well, I'm saying is, Satan's desire is to plant a seed of deception in our hearts to call us to always have excuses. You know, suppose every time you talk to them, they got an excuse. Got an excuse why they can't be on time. Got an excuse why they don't have a job. Got an excuse why they can't keep nobody. Next week on Tuesday Valentine's Day, they're going to be in the dump because they got an excuse because everybody don't like me. And it seems like I'm always in. Yeah, I mean, some people just major in excuses. And let me tell you something, beloved. Excuses only sound good to the one that's offering. And so sometimes we convince ourselves to embrace the excuse. My heart's right. I'm not downplaying it. I'm not downplaying it. I asked my sciatica. I'm not downplaying it. But if you can go in and punch on the job, tell me why you can't come and give God some praise. Bring you and your sciatica to get in God's house and maybe God heal you so when you walk back out, you ain't got no sciatica. You ain't what I'm saying. And I'm just saying it because I said shit. But what I'm saying is that but she said it now. She said it out loud. But and I'm not making fun of any ailments that we have. But oftentimes, Sam will use our help yeah. right. to call us to not come to church. Yeah. And it's the art of deception. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, I'm going to finish one now. Let's see how far we go. Uh, uh, notice what it says in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, the, 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 the serpent from the Amplified Version was more crafty, subtle. In deceit than get this any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, Satan, said to the woman, Can it be, can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? He see the text over us. We know that, 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 that God has given Adam dominion over everything. He said, Just don't eat from this tree. Tree of knowledge. And, 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 and then here comes Eve. And notice he gets the weaker vessel. Because God gave the commandment to who? He didn't give it to Eve. I'm not talking negative about women, but I'm letting you know how crafty he is. Because he said he didn't come to the one that God gave the orders to. He went to the one that's connected to you. And that's what he'll do to us today. If he can't get you, he's going to he gonna attack the one that's closest to you. And that's why some of your children stay under attack. That's why some of your grandchildren stay under attack. That's why some of your cousins stay under attack. That's why some of your brothers and sisters stay under attack. Why? Because the devil knows he can't get you, so he's attacking the next closest thing to you. Sometimes he'll take, oh gosh, he'll take them from you. And I, and I can only say this for myself. I can only say this me and my husband met yesterday, and we were talking about some things, and, and how this just still, this just still don't seem real. Maybe, you know, maybe I snap out of it some one time. Uh, you know, you look at uh, your pictures and you see, you see my eyes are your lines still don't. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Grief is real. I don't know what yeah. I'm yeah. You know, one thing I never tell a person is go on and get over it. Because right. right. if you ain't walking my shoes, you don't know how easy it is to get over it. <laughs> but I am saying you can't stay there in that low place because then depression will set in. And we were talking yesterday, just how about how. I said, it just don't seem real. It seems like just going off on a trip and maybe she has not come back in months saying the same thing. She said, this just don't seem real. I said, I don't know what it's going to take for the clip. This clip in my mind. I don't know what's going to, what it's going to take. I'm not pressed, I'm not sad. It just has not registered with my mind. And sometimes what Satan will do is allow, or God will allow your loved one to leave you. I'm talking strong over there. I'm talking about something. I can't tell your story, I can tell my story. And I tell you this to the glory of God. It's been a blow. Two years back to back, losing both grandparents. I'm just talking about me. Hard when you got grandparents that are like your parents. Y'all trying to know what I'm talking about. It's tough. Some of us have lost, and you know us that have lost loved ones. I'm not going to name because I don't want anyone to, I'm not feeding off your emotion. What I'm saying today is, this is what Lord showed me, is that, 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 and I asked Lord, Lord, are you really going to take her? It's quick. Because, listen, I asked one of those good too. Okay, y'all saying, you should say that. Come on here, church. You know some of those that live. 
little bit more hellacious. Don't want to do right. Stirring up trouble. I'm like, well, I got a whole list of folks. You could have took them. Why did you take mine? Hallelujah. God, you don't understand. First of all, son, all souls belong to be in the first place. <laughs> but what I've learned through this is that, that Satan will, even though your, your loved one that you have has gone on, mm-hmm. it's a tactic of the enemy for you to fall into such a pit of sorrow. Right. Right. A pit of grief. Right. To where you just become overcome. Yeah, right, yeah. Can't even take strength. And I know it's hard. I'm not downplaying grief. I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about your process because all of us got our own process. You got to learn how to push through that thing. Yeah. Satan's job is to deceive you. Yeah. And if he can't kill you, he's going to kill the closest thing to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If he can't get you, he's going to get the closest thing to you. Why? Because he wants to take you out. I, I, I heard that. That's what you gotta put in your heart, in your mind. I don't care who leaves me. I don't care who leaves this world. You better cancel my funeral because I'm not going nowhere until God finishes the work that He is in my life. At least two witnesses in this. And says, I'm not going to leave it in my time yet. He left me here for a reason. I know I got some hills to climb. I know I got some mountains and some valleys. But God left me here because I still have purpose. I still have call here, somebody. I still have work to do. Way off of there. 
And so he stuck. And we looked one day, and there was one lizard that was on there, and he was alive, but 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 the ants had begun to eat and eat away at him. Now I'm gonna do this disgusting. This is one of my This is a nasty little we know we little kids. But 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 here's the thing. It is and that's what Satan will do. Satan will allow us to be stuck in the traps of deception. We still alive, but we're slowly decaying. The, oh, that was good to me. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all should clap when I said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all should clap. Because see, what happened is the lizard was alive. Because every, every now and then I would see the head trying to move. Yeah. And, and, and they were stuck on the pad. Ants had already taken over the lizard's body. So he was in, he was in a, a decay process. But the lizard didn't recognize that he was so stuck that he was dying. Some of us, we've been so stuck that we've been stuck, 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 stuck. I mean, you've been stuck for real. And so that's what Satan desires to do. We have to do a part two. Because what he desires to do is to put us in a place of deception. To where he paints pictures in our minds. Notice what he says in Genesis chapter 3. He said that, that, that Satan is presented as a servant. He's crafty, subtle. He was not something, you know, even you talk about a state, I can't stand a state, but he was a crafty thing. Crafty enough. Let me tell you something. This one Bible says that we've got to be wise, and think about that scripture, wise as serpents, harmless as doves. What does that mean? Is that Satan was wise. Thank goodness, goodness, goodness. I'm trying to put something in your tank for you right home. Is, is that Satan was wise enough. To know that I can't get out. But let me get his wife. I, I don't stand a chance for Adam because Adam is too strong. Let me get his wife. Okay, some of y'all don't like that. Let me go. Let me jump over to Job. Job, Job, here, 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 here we have a man that's the richest man on the east. He got, he got, he got 10 kids. And, and, and the Bible says that, that Job, Job got so sick, flesh fell from his bones. And, he, and, and, and his, his, his rib says to him, Job, you might as well just go home. Curse God, good guy. Notice, notice, notice. Job never cursed God. He got angry with God. But God straight him out and said, Where were you? Okay. But, but the point is, is that he went after his wife. Now, 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 here's the thing that I said. Let's turn there for a moment. I know some of y'all said, I wish you would go home, so this is one more day. Turn with me to Job. Uh, um, um, this is what was dropped uh, uh, in our hearts to share with you. Let's turn to Job chapter 2. Y'all enjoying this? Yes. Y'all know what I am. <laughs> Job chapter 2, verse, verse, verse 10. You, you have it? You've got to say it you have it. Read it. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now wait just one second. Wait just one second. Notice the, ter the text where it says, uh, uh, let's look at uh, verse, that verse uh, uh, 10 again. And uh, no, let's, let's go back. And look at verse 7. Read verse 7 and then verse 7. Go to 7 and then go, go to 9 if you don't mind. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils. He's sick. We don't know about some theologians say he had a terminal case of cancer. 
So much so that to be around him, it was a, just a pungent odor coming from Job. And, 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 and so, you know, Satan desired to kill him. But, the, but Satan said, God, I can't get to him because he got a hedge around him. Move the hedge. And God said, okay, deal. I tell you what, you can attack him, but you can't touch his soul. Yeah. All right, so then we get back to verse 7. Okay, so the soul boils. We are. From the sole of his foot unto his crown. All over his body. He's sick. Yes. Got boils. All right, read on. Verse 9. Eight. 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 And he took him a pot shirt mm -hmm. to scrape himself with all. Mm -hmm. And he sat down among the ashes. Look at this. He, also, he takes a clay pot. Mm -hmm. And he now, imagine, he drops, breaks the clay pot, and he's now taking the clay pot, you know it's sharp. Yeah. And he's scraping the pores. Can you imagine the agony that he was in? It's not, it's not, let me tell you something. When you sign up to be saved, they will go through some hardship. Yeah. That's why some people don't last long because they want to live on blabbery bits and eat. But when you sign up to be saved for real, you're going to go through some hardship. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations. Yeah. Look at this brother here today. The, the Bible says he's got boils and can't go. No doubt can help him. So he's taking clay. A clay pot and he's scraping his boils. Can you imagine the pus and the blood that's just now oozing out? Oh my God. Read on. Read on. Verse 9. Then, he's, then said his wife unto him. Then here she come. She sees. Now, now I'm telling you, this is serious. This is this is serious. That's why you gotta be careful who you marry. Right Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because everything that God, everything that went to the courthouse or said I do ain't God ordained. All right, I don't really like to hear that, but I'm just telling you because here's the thing: she sees his agony, she sees his grief, she sees the suffering that he goes through, and listen to what she has to say. Go ahead. Does thou still retain thine integrity? Are you still going to be a good man like they say you are? You still going to live right? You know what they tell us? God, you claim to be saved, but where is your God now? That's what they say. If God is so good, then why did he let this happen? If God is so good, why did he let that happen? And sometimes we struggle with the doings of God. Lord, if you're good, why do you let the bad things happen? And the thing about it, brothers and sisters, what we understand is that, yea, all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations. You're going to go through some hardships. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be ostracized. You're going to be criticized. You're going to be scrutinized. Your neighbors going to be talked about in rooms that you'll never go to. But the good news that you have is that if God be for you, he's more than every tongue that shall come up against you. We try to defend yourself. We're a fool. Oh Lord, my here I am in God. Hold that if you will, Amanda. Since we get ready to close, if if here I am trying to be like Jesus, here you come with your foolish activity. Yeah. I'm gonna stop, and when I stop, I'm stopping being like Him. I like I pose Jesus to give you my attention to respond to your foolishness. And, and this is what oh okay, this is what really happens. It's because you foolish in the first place. Here I am trying to be like Jesus. And in the eyes of God, there is no respect of person. But there are levels as it relates to being in God. And so here I am up here. And you down here just trying to get me to come down where you are. Just trying to get me to come down where you are. Just trying to get me to come down where you are. Every week he's coming something else. Every week he's coming something else. Well, it's you that's back. It's locked in back. That's too tight. That's too little. You don't stop down here. Stop down here. Wow. 
that's, the, that's what your problem is. You're around like-minded people. Because when you low, they already know it. That's why you can't go no higher. If you're the smartest person in your circle, you need to find you another circle. But some of us are so content with being the person that they go to that we won't find. Let me tell you something. You've got to be involved with people that's going to stretch to be your best self. Even if, look, listen, I tell all my friends, I ain't got to admit it. My thing is this, is, is listen. Don't come to me asking for advice if you don't want me to tell you the truth. And here's the thing. When I go to them, I, I expect the same thing from them. Same thing with my wife. Look, if my wife comes, look, you want me to tell you what I think, you want me to tell you. What do you want me to tell you? Because some people only want to hear what's going to please them. But you cannot afford to be around people that's going to satisfy you and tickle your face and make you feel good. Right? Find somebody that's going to stretch you to be your best self. All of us in here, oh bro, you heard the word and now you're responsible. Walk this thing out. Father, we thank you. Thank you that even though we live in perilous times, you've shown to us on today. And even though Satan is a deceiver, that Lord, you have given us the power, the authority, yes. Yes. the stick to witness, yes. the stick ability, yes. the stick stand and stay. God, I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen every viewer, every listener, every person that's in this sanctuary. Those that feel inadequate, insufficient, those that feel downtrodden, and feel like they're just, oh God, never going to get this thing right. Lord, you ask that you would descend now and strength. They help them know that God, you're able to do anything but fail. I know some of us are at a low point. Some of us are not where we desire to be. But God, remind us now that you don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. Yes. And without faith, it's impossible to please you. So God, we thank you. Thank you. Where you brought us from. Yes. Thank you, God, for where you brought us to. Yes. Thank you, God, for where you're taking us to. And God, we believe. That not just for us, but God, for everyone that we're attached to. Yeah. This is not just our winning season. This will be the rest of our life. Yeah. Everything attached to us will win. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So God, let your peace and your love lie with us. Go with us to stand by us as we can go in on and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand out of praise all day long. Certainly, if you're not saved or if you desire uh, uh, to be a member of our church, stay, remain standing. We, we, we're ready to go. Uh, if, you, if you're not saved and you desire, or you desire to be a part of our church, then come. Uh, if you desire, come quick, come quick. Come quick, come see you. I think you're going to come this way. You need to be in good ground. We need, need, need to be where somebody's praying with you, where somebody's going to challenge you. Not, not somebody's going to just tickle your fancy. I'm not here to say what we like to hear. We've got to be challenged by the word of God. Yes, yes. So we can be the best beings, best mothers, yes, best trustees. Yes. You know what? We want to be the best ushers yes. that this town and this, this world has. Why? Because only what we do for Christ yes. is going to last. Yes. So as we leave on today, know that we love you with the love of God. We'll pick up next week. Part two of Parenthood Times. Tune into our Wednesday now uh, at 7 p.m. for part two of Moving from Excuse to Excellence. You need to be tapped in and connected to the Word of God. Other day, as follows, thank you for the eyes of seeing, ears of heard, heart of God. Thank you for the time that we have spent together. Yes. God, I pray I did your word no harm, but that somebody has heard what you said on today. Yes. God bless you. It was been mentioned from this place of memory from your presence. Keep us in the set of your will. God, so we'll be able to come back together next week. Yes. But God, we crack this guy this afternoon. We want to hear you say, well done. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Now in the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest through and allow us into what and forevermore. Let us say, amen.